we're having an important conversation about how to connect young people to schools and to careers. But did you know that over the course of this day, much of which you will sit here talking about these problems, that 6,000, more than 6,000, black and Latino young people will drop out of the nation's public schools. Regarding careers, by 2018, 60% of the American jobs will require at least some college. 45% of those will require an associate's degree. And here's a shocker, perhaps. Three quarters of Latino and black people do not have that degree. Is this a problem? Sure it is. It's a problem for the young people that I'm talking about because we know that their opportunities will be limited, that their futures may not be bright. And it is a problem for the nation, a huge problem for the nation. Let me tell you why. America's tomorrow is going to be very different from America's yesterday. In 1980, in this country, 20% of the population was of color, Latino, Asian, Native American, black, of color. By the 2010 census, 36% of the population was of color. By 2042, not 2050, by 2042, the majority of the people in this nation will be of color. Already, the majority of babies born are of color. By 20, the end of this decade, by the end of this decade, the majority of all people under 18 will be of color. And by 2030, the majority of the young workforce will be of color. If we continue to have communities that are systematically being left behind, if we continue to have communities that do not have access to what they need in order to fully contribute, the future is not bright for the nation. And so what has been a moral concern in this nation for its history, and certainly for me, I've been working on these issues all my adult life because it was the right thing to do, it was the moral thing to do, it was the just thing to do. It continues to be that. But we now are at a point at which we have to make sure that everybody is able to contribute, everybody's able to reach their full potential. It has become imperative for the nation that we get this right. Now, why do I keep talking about race? Why do I keep bringing it up? I actually bring it up all across the country. All too often, I know that people do not want to hear it. Why doesn't she just come out, say something nice, and get off without <laughs> forcing us to talk and think about race? And the reason is because while we know that we have to have universal goals if we're going to achieve the things we need for the nation, Without targeted strategies informed by the realities of people's lives, including those things that are happening in their lives because they're black, Latino, Native American, or other, that we will not be able to have strategies that are going to make a difference. Let me talk about that for a little bit. Class matters for sure. We just heard about that, and I embrace that conversation completely. And race matters. One of the things that we know in this country is that where you live has so much to do with the opportunities that are available to you. If you live in a low-income community, if you live in a low-income community of color, you very likely aren't going to have a school that's going to meet all of your needs. You may well be isolated from jobs. You may not be near public transportation that can connect you to jobs. Housing discrimination against black people continues to be the highest form of housing discrimination in the country. It matters about race when you think about place, because place and race are tied together. We also know that when you are thinking about schools, when you're thinking about how to make sure that children have everything they need, we've had an experiment going on in this country in which middle class families have shown us how to make sure that their children are well educate, educated. They send their kids to a good school. Within that school, they make sure they find a good classroom with a good teacher, but they also make sure that they don't leave it to the school alone. They have extracurricular activities. They make sure the kids are busy in the summer. They have a whole expanded 
learning that is available. We need to make sure that in low-income communities of color that that's available there as well. When we think about access to higher education, it has to happen. You, I, you heard, at least some college is going to be required for 60% of the jobs going forward. We have to make sure that young people are able to really move forward into higher education. That means that they have to do well in K-12. To do well in K-12, they have to begin school ready to learn. So what does that say for all of us? What it says is that we have to pay attention not just to setting the universal goals, but having the targeted strategies that get to the children and the communities in ways that what we know we all need gets to all of us in a way that we can utilize it to build a path going forward. Are we going to be an opportunity nation or are we going to be a pull up the ladder nation? We are here because we believe we can be an opportunity nation, but we have to invest in that ladder that ladder has to go all the way to the ground, not hover as a distant dream. That ladder has to be strong so it can hold the millions that have to climb up to do what they need for themselves and what the nation needs for them to do. That ladder has to be available. It has to be available to all. So that means we have to do what we're doing now. We have to focus on schools. We have to focus on careers. We have to focus on the young people who are ready to lead but we have to make sure that all can lead. You are generous, we are generous as a nation. We are mentors. We give in our faith institutions. We donate. We give of our time, we serve in soup kitchens and that's all good, but it is not enough. We have to do that and we have to do more. We have to do more. We have to make sure that we have more than programs. Head Start programs and other early childhood programs that may be excellent and only reach a few will not do for the future we need. We need a system that makes sure that all children begin school ready to learn. An after school program here and there that's wonderful is not enough. We have to have expanded learning for all children and make sure that they reach their full potential. A good job training program, an excellent community college here or there is not enough. Our whole system has to systematically make sure that all children get what they need. We're at a crucial moment. The things that we hold dear, we have to continue to hold dear. It is a moral imperative for sure, but it's also an economic imperative. We need young people to be all in. And for them to be all in, we have to be all in. By that I mean, we have to make sure that we're giving it all we have so that the young people who we know are going to be our future are ready to be our leaders, they're ready to be our workers, they're ready to be our entrepreneurs, they're ready to keep democracy alive through civic engagement. It's up to us. Thank you.